Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bag up, bag up, bag up, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. Oh, Lord, Lord, Jesus. What the, what, what you doing, Terry? Hey, Sooner Football fans. This is your Sooner Football Fans podcast. You got Terry and Rob here. Boomer up. Boomer Terry. And we are coming at you from the still corona-free podcast palace in beautiful Norman, Oklahoma. Where we are not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma. But we do have eligibility left. And uh, guys, whatever you're listening to us on, like, subscribe, uh, share it on social media. Go so, ahead and tag us. If you tag want. us, yeah. Do something. Um, but... Uh, we are going to have Glenn and Jeff, or Jeff and Glenn. I don't know which one comes first, so we'll just say Jeff and Glenn, Glenn and Jeff. From the Friday Frothy from Australia, we're going full international. We recorded with them last week. We had computer issues. It's too bad because we had a great time and a great yeah. podcast. And we're going to try to reproduce that again tonight. So, uh, But they're great guys. We're going to talk about Australia. They're going to teach us about Australian rules football right. because – I'm kind of glad we're doing this again because I've had more questions that pop in my head. Oh. And so uh, we did learn some things last week that we're going to share with you guys about Australia and um, all that fun stuff. But um, before we get them on, we're going to get them on here in about five minutes. We're going to talk a little bit of Oklahoma football, fill people in. I learned something today, Rob, that uh, C.D. Lamb and I have something in common. Yes, what's that? Uh, when he was a kid. He used to play dodge rocks with his friends. Dodge rocks. Instead of dodgeball, mm -hmm. they played it with rocks. Remember, I've told you the story. Of I playing. do. <laughs> and I think I questioned your intellect at that point. Hey, but <laughs> hey you know, it was something to play. Yeah. You know, we didn't have dodgeball, so we played dodge rocks. Okay. Uh, but C.D. Lamb, they did on uh, NFL Network, they did a little story on him, and that's one of the things they talked about as a kid that he used to play was dodge rocks. Now, we used to throw rocks at people. I don't know if we expected them to throw them back, but... <laughs> you didn't want them to throw them back, that's right, for sure. Right, right. Uh, we did play dodgeball with, with pop bottle rockets, so... Oh, yeah, well, yeah. duh. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever do it with uh, Roman, Roman candle. candles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually a little bit more accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, uh, also, uh, did you get to see uh, Barry Switzer's... Um, corona video today uh i i didn't get to listen to it but i seen it yeah what do you think about the beard the the goatee coming in there for the king yeah, i liked it he's got the full growth kind of coming in there mm -hmm. um he got a you know few good points in you know as only the king can talked about you know don't touch your face i got this doggone beard mm -hmm. so i'm touching my face all the time and don't pick your nose don't pick your nose. That's one. <laughs> People got to be told not to do that, huh? <laughs> but all know, right, Barry, Barry Switzer is the only person alive, in my opinion, that can give that advice and everybody take it seriously. All right. Every every person in Oklahoma just went ooh. Where Except for those people that wear mullets, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they just went from you know let's let's you know not pick our nose. It became a thing. Barry Switzer made. Not picking your nose during the coronavirus, a thing. Was he talking to Sooner fans or Cowboy fans? Probably Cowboy fans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where that came from. Okay. Hashtag don't pick your nose. But um, now, like I said, we are going to have, the, you know, we got the draft coming up. We got a big guest coming up uh, early next week uh, or earlier, later on this week uh, on the podcast. But right now, um, you can check these guys out on YouTube and Facebook. We're going to call them on our international hotline. Is that what we call it now? Right? The bat phone. The bat phone. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, it needs to be something. Uh, the boomer phone. No. Hmm. Uh, the wish. The wish phone. The wish phone. Yeah, like wishbone. <laughs> <laughs> the wishbone phone. Okay. No. Is that not better? That's, yeah, I like it. You, okay, you you say you like it, but you're looking at me like. <laughs> Like your dork? Yeah, like no, I'm a dork. No, no, no. You're totally misreading that. I'm misreading. Okay, yeah. I'm sure I am. Uh, uh, well, let's think of another. We can't call it the bat phone. No, I like the wish phone. The wish phone? <laughs> or or the schooner phone? The peanut crowd doesn't like it. The peanut crowd. <laughs> the peanut gallery, I mean. <laughs> yeah, we do have a live studio audience tonight. Mm -hmm. 
So I didn't hear him clapping yet, though. So now, I'm kind of disappointed. But. Now you would think, you know, they would be. A l- Maybe she's just too in awe. Maybe that must be it. So we'll give you our autograph later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they cost too, by the way. So <laughs> <laughs> hope you brought, and we don't take checks or credit cards. So anyway. Well, I forgot to ask you real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. How is your um, uh, quarantine essential job going? Keep it's going. Keep everybody informed. Yeah, well, I had to take a little paid cut. So in in order to offset that, they, they put us off Friday. So now I'm, I'm off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Because I'm just, you know, more so, of the same for me, just kind of kicking back at the house, you know, and stuff. So. Oh, I thought you might be out um Doing, doing a little bit of male gigoloing? No, uh, close. I walked around the golf course today, so that was, you know, I had chicks following me everywhere, but it is what it is. Yeah, well, you know, congratulations. Of course, they that. were actually gooselings, yeah, gosling. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. But are they, are they, are they geese, geeselings or are they gagglings gaggle or something? Gaggle of geeselings. Yeah, gaggles. I don't, of, I, don't know, but, I don't know. They're all over the golf yeah. course, though, so. But... Uh, yeah, um, uh, my company finally got our, our personal protective equipment in. Uh, it's been horrible um, having people having to work without it, but we have services that we have to uh, supply, and our employees in my company, field employees, did, have been doing a great job. And we finally got some PPE in, um, and I was out distributing it. Uh, big shout out to Sooner Mall for allowing my company to come out and set up out there for our employees so they didn't have to drive from Norman because my office is in Purcell and I cover from all pretty much southern Oklahoma, south central Oklahoma. So they allowed us to set up up there and pass out uh, masks and gloves and all that stuff. Let me ask you a question. Because my company recently came out and said that the expectation from them for us is if we leave our home, our abode, it is expected that we will wear a mask. And I thought, I don't think you can tell me what to do when I'm not in, in <laughs> this is the, true. This building. Yeah. If they, um, you know, our company is asking, you know, out of great, um, our employees, uh, field employees to all day long out of great caution, not because of a requirement set by anybody, but I don't think your job can tell you to do that. Now I know, uh, Guthrie, just put in a mask law. You remember Caleb was talking about that. You gotta, really? Yeah, you have to be, if you're out in public, you have to be wearing some sort of mask. Okay. What if you don't have one? Can you just wear like your t-shirt up or, yeah. you know, over you, the top any, of your head? anything that covers, you can wear, you know, your turd stained underwear around your face or uh-huh, uh-huh. that'll keep people away from you. I'm thinking I'd probably just stay inside, <laughs> but, um, you know, be that as it may, if that's you, then more power to yeah. you. But. but you just have to have some type of covering and Caleb, uh, yeah, you know, he had to go up there. He didn't have any mask, and he said he felt like a criminal. He said because everybody around was wearing a mask, but him. So, well, actually, I went to Walmart today to grab some <laughs> breakfast groceries for in the morning, mm-hmm. and I'd say probably only maybe twenty five percent of people were ma- wearing masks. Yeah. Maybe you know twenty five thirty. It's more, you know, this is just my opinion. I'm not going to. It's not a medical opinion or anything else. It's more important to wear gloves than it is masks. That's just my opinion. So, not if you don't touch nobody. Well, if you're touching the shelves, you're touching the cart, you know, ha- if you can find hand sanitizer, use it. But th- I think that's more important than mask. I mean, there's a lot of debate over them. Unless you've got an N95, those uh, respirator masks, you're, you're basically, whatever you're wearing over your face, it's just a cloth. So that's yeah. just my opinion. Yeah. But it does help keep germs in, and that's the, that's the idea. But personally, today was the first time I've ever, I, you know, other than at work, where it's required. Mm-hmm. Um is the first time I've wore gloves to Walmart. You know, I just thought, you know what? I look at some of these n- nasty people walking around that place. And I'm like, Yee. so that's why Terry, they deliver my groceries <laughs> that I was reminded today why I shop online yeah. and why I have stuff delivered. Gotcha. So. Well, uh, it is, um, time to get there. They're probably wondering why we haven't called. So I will, let's, let's get the Friday frothy. Cut that. Okay. All right, so fans, on our, as we've deemed our international wish phone, um, we have both uh, the guys from the Friday Frothy, Glenn and Jeff. Boomer, guys. 
Okay, well, see, there we go. We, we will just start with that first off. So, before we get into anything, tell everybody about um, your show, the the Friday Frothy, how it came about, what what is it all about. Tell our listeners about your show. There you go, Jeff. Yeah. All right, mate. Uh, yeah. Look, guys, thanks thanks for having us on. I uh, appreciate the invite and hope everyone there as well. Um, guys, we've we've been on uh, YouTube for probably just over 12 months now, or probably well, a little bit more. And uh, we're, a, we're a sports-orientated show where we uh, we just started off, just Glenn and I, uh, on YouTube talking about uh, all sports. Um, and then we sort of got into just sending out messages to, to sports people, famous sports people in Australia, and um, they started responding, and, and we're getting them on our show. And, yeah, we're, we're doing interviews as well as, uh, as, our, uh, as our normal show. And now uh, with coronavirus around, as you guys would be well aware, there's no sports anywhere in the world. So um, we've had to play with the show a little bit, and we're doing trivia competitions and, yeah, games and, and different things to try and keep people, uh, give them something to do on a Friday night. But uh, Friday Frothy is uh, all about beer. I don't know. Is a Frothy a beer over there? Uh, we, well, it's not called Frothy, but when I saw the name of your show, I knew what a Frothy was. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. It, well, it, Glenn, Glenn and I are quite partial to a Frothy, which is a beer. Aren't you, Glenn? Uh, but, but yes, mate, yes. I uh, don't mind a, mind a beer. I've had one or two in my life. But, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, no, look, uh, the, the show... Also, is has got a lot of fun element to it. Yes. In our, it's, uh, we don't take ourselves too serious. There is probably some serious aspects in it, but uh, most of the time, mate, we're probably like you guys. We, uh, uh, an Australian term, we ackalack around, which means muck around a little bit. And, okay, uh, hold on. Say that again. Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you... It might be more interesting. We ackalack. Ackalack. around. Oh. Back like around, that means muck around. It's a, it's a short, it's a short <laughs> slang, slang term, but uh, geez, it's, it's uh, early yeah. on the show. <laughs> Acolac. I don't know if we're allowed to swear, mate, but I'll put it another way. We talk. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you, you do what? Acolac. Ac- Ac- uh, Acolac. <laughs> do you have to say it fast, or I mean, yeah, because it, it kind of <laughs> Acolac, Acolac, Acolac around. <laughs> Right? Exactly. Is that how it goes? So, pretty yeah, much. Pretty right. much. <laughs> it just it's fun. Okay. All right. Well, um I'm gonna use that. Yeah, we're gonna use that. That's now <laughs> part of our vocabulary. That's right. <laughs> um but also it's probably a strike. So we can ex- we can explain Boomer to you and Boomer sooner. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Um, I sent you guys the video of the crowd chanting Boomer Sooner. Mm. Okay. That's huge. Um, yes. You know, you got you know ninety thousand people, half the cr- crowd chanting towards the other one. One side goes Boomer, the other side goes Sooner. And uh, it's, I guess, for lack of a better term, Rob, a battle cry. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I mean, that, that's uh, the meaning of. Boomer sooner might be somewhat, you know, not a bad a cry, but <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and tell them about what, what a sooner is, Rob. You're what a sooner is. Okay. Um, so if you guys are familiar with the land run in 1889 in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, you probably not, but um, oh. yeah, the government was giving away free land in the, well, it was still territory at the time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in 1889. And, there was a go time at, you know, 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, right? Well, the Sooners were a group of dignitaries, lawmen, politicians, um, possibly even some royalty that were allowed to go sooner than everyone else to stake out certain parts of land. Now, be that legal or illegal, I'm not sure, <laughs> but that's who the Sooners were. And it was also, and there, there was also a group of people that weren't like Rob explained that snuck in and hid out yep. and staked their claim. So, you know, like you said, there's there's two little sides to it. They were dignitaries. They were allowed to go in sooner than everybody else. And then there were some people that call them land thieves. They went in, even though they didn't steal. They got inside the territory, and when they 
had the land run, they staked. And those were the boomers. Those were the boomers. So <laughs> you put them together, you got, you got boomer you sooner. Got boomer sooner. <laughs> and Which that, is also so the guys, name of the mascots at the University of Oklahoma, Boomer and Sooner. And So you, you, you staked your land then because you're the Sooners. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's just. Is that what's happening? Wasn't it? It, 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 it's what goes on at the, you know, this is the name of our fight song, Boomer Sooner. And um, the crowd, um, usually just a few minutes before kickoff, uh, gets that roar going. And, um, you know, literally, it, you, when you were a kid like us, you remember the first time you were at your first game and you heard it. Um, it is deafening. Yeah, it's deafening. And people who've waited their whole, you know, there's people that – you know, spent their whole life and didn't get to come to an Oklahoma game until the, until they were adult. And if you talk to them, they'll talk about how they got goosebumps and the hair on their arms stood up. You know, because it's something that you always wanted to witness in person. So, yep. yep. But, Terry, is that uh, is that the same when you when you go uh, to a, an opposition's game? Like if you're out of state playing somewhere else? Oh yeah. The they, sort of depending, you know, the crowd will start it. You know, it. You know, we may not be. You know, there may only be three thousand people. 5,000 of Sooner fans because, you know, they only sell so many tickets to the opposing team. Right. Mm. Mm. But you'll hear it. You'll hear it out there, you know, um, people trying to get the chant going. And, um, uh, you you know, if you're in Texas and you're around a lot of Oklahoma fans, you know, you can get the chant going real quick. <laughs> because <laughs> cause everybody in Oklahoma hates Texas. So That's right. So, so, so let, me, let me get this right. So when you say – Hey, Boomer Jeff, I've got to respond as sooner. Sooner, hey, sooner, yeah. Terry. Yeah, if I go, if, if I just go Boomer, you just say sooner. Yep. That's all you got to do. Sooner. <laughs> now, and I've told, I'll, I'll tell, I know our listeners have heard this story, but it's one of my favorite Boomer Sooner stories. My family was at um, Universal Studios in, in uh, Florida, amusement park, for vacation. And my wife and I were wearing Oklahoma Sooner shirts walking around the park. And I notice out of the corner of my eye, this guy running, okay, towards me, <laughs> a big guy, okay, huh? and he's running towards me at like full speed. And I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, still watching him out of the corner of my eye. And I finally turn, and when I do, this guy is wearing a Michigan Wolverine shirt, okay. He gets in in like a tackle position and just screams at me, Boomer! And I yell right back in his face, Sooner, and he grabs me and goes, man, I always wanted to do that to a Sooner fan. That is awesome. <laughs> so, you know, at first I thought this guy was going to come to fight me because he was running. I mean, and I just turned, you know, and he was, Boomer and Sooner, and he was like, man, I always wanted that. So, you know, it, it's a it's a well-known chant in college football. It's more than the chant, though. I mean, you could see somebody out on the street and just go, Boomer. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and they'll yell it back. Right? Yeah. He <laughs> sounds like he's quite unaware of social distancing at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the one of the things we did last week um, when we talked to you guys the first time, uh, but we're we're going to kind of do a rundown of our edu- education with you guys, and we can expound on it further as we go along. So um, we had dumb questions uh, for you guys last week. You know, we're uh, Rob and I have never been to Australia, and. You guys are – what town are y'all from in Australia? And Glenn? Uh, sorry, what, what was the question? What, what town? Where, where are we from? Where are yeah, we? where are you we're from? from beer, are you? Well, from, we're, well we're, in, we're from a little island called Tasmania, which is at the bottom of uh, Australia. Uh, and uh, population around about 550, I suppose, 550,000. Um yeah, I mean, we're probably, uh, by plane, we're about 50 minutes to uh, uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia, which most people uh, probably in America have heard of. Probably heard Melbourne, more of Melbourne. Melbourne. Melbourne, as you say. Melbourne. Melbourne, I'd say Melbourne. You'd say Melbourne. Correct. Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little bit of American in me, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, we, we like to draw those vowels out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, yeah, we're, we're we're a small island. As I said, we rely on, um, I suppose, our main thing in Tasmania is is produce, like uh, obviously 
due to our climate, we're a little bit cooler than the yeah. uh, other states. So we're uh, growing like our you know, vegetables and, and fruits and all that. Uh, certainly wines is a big thing down here. We, we, we do produce a lot of good wines that, that go all over the world now. And uh, yeah, and it's and because it was a um, it was a, a convict uh, state, uh, we were the second apart from New South Wales. We were discovered in that. Uh, so we was we had one of the first penal colonies uh, in Australia. So uh, that, that might give people, and we are oh. <laughs> Tasmania. Now, now the reason the reason not, I I had to get Glenn to answer that one was because I had a few beers last night, and I don't know where I am still. So <laughs> thanks, Glenn. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, um, first, so we will go into our dumb questions real quick, okay? For and our first question for you guys last uh, was. Um, are there outback steakhouses in Australia? And we were shocked, you know, mm. that you guys didn't know what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. No, but Terry, no. I've done some, I've done some homework during the week, mate, and uh, it, and I, I keep I, I say mate a lot. Is that something that you guys are familiar with over there? Uh, hey, uh, mate? Only only because we watch Crocodile Dundee. That's the only reason why we know that's not. <laughs> right, yo, mate. Anyway. <laughs> We uh we don't have an outback steakhouse here in in Tasmania, uh, and I did a bit of work during the week after you talked about it, and uh, we have three in New South Wales, so oh, in okay. that Sydney area. So you would have heard of Sydney. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there is three in in the country of Australia, but I wouldn't say that's massive. Yeah, well, but they're I, not actually out, they're not outback though, Jeff. Though are they? They're called outback. No. But they're yeah. not out there. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're in, they're in the suburbs. They're in the city. They're in the city. <laughs> yeah, and the the fact that Australians had to research outback steakhouses because the way they present it here in the United States is it's a state you know the Aussie steakhouse is here for Americans, mm. and which yeah. leads us to another question: Do you, are blooming onions a thing in Australia, Jeff? <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! What are they? Blooming onions. Onions. Blooming. No. Oh, okay. No. See, we, we've been I'll lied tell, to I'll, again. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one thing. They bloom in onions after you've had enough of them. Bloom <laughs> <laughs> them at your backside. Yeah, that's about it, mate. Well, uh, at, at, at Outback Steakhouse, Rob, you want to tell them what a blooming onion a is? A blooming onion is an onion that's that's cut up, battered, and deep fried. Yeah, and Onion rings. No, no, you don't cut it up like that. You cut, you just cut the top off of it, and they kind of dice it. And when you put it in a deep fryer, the onion blooms. It opens up. It's, it's still, oh, uh, yeah, it's wow. still, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, look, they're surprised at what. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice. Yeah, they are really good, but I thought it was something that, you know, it's not quite an onion yeah. ring, but it's yeah, it's the same concept. It's yeah. it's battered, but you know, the bottom of it is still is kept connected. It's still a whole onion. You, it's just cut, cut up. I tell you what, we'll we'll share this with uh, with our viewers on our show uh, next week and and ask around and see if we can get anyone in on the mainland of Australia who knows anything about it because it sounds fantastic to me. Yeah, it, it's good. it's it's really good. Wait, wait, wait. You know, but you know, and hey, listen, the, the just, way the just way you're on for it. the way they explain yeah, it, it's a blooming onion, and of course the guy you know on the commercials has an accent like you guys do, and so you'd think a blooming onion is an Australian delicacy, but well, once once <laughs> once again, it, it could be something on the mainland of uh, of Australia. As I said last week, we've only just recently got electricity here in Tasmania, so we're 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 a little bit behind things. <laughs> Pass me a candle, please, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Still got oil lamps in a few I, places, so yeah. <laughs> the um, other thing I wanted to throw in is there's been a there's been a huge movement in Australia. Um, Towards offset smokers and uh, you know slow and low and slow cooking American style ribs and brisket and right. all that sort of stuff. So that's yeah, that's I, that's huge. So that's I just think. now that's just now becoming a thing over there. Yeah, it'll probably look, the last twelve yeah. months. Really? Yeah. Is, um, is, is there? Are they re- restaurants? I'm guessing. Is do you have a favorite? What are they called? What's some of the good ones called out there? Mm, don't know. 
what, what, I did what, my own home. What we, what we mainly had from America, we, we did have uh, uh, plenty of stores like uh, rib, rib houses and mm -hmm. rib ranches and all that sort of thing going back. Even going way back, we've had those. We've had people try to open up American-style food places. Um, you know, I know when we went away, and I'm going back 20, 30 years ago, we went to a place in Los Angeles called Knotsbury Farm, and there was a thing called, there was a place there which the, which you guys would appreciate, your southern fried chicken. Mm -hmm. So I'll throw that to you. Yeah. That was as good chicken as I've ever had. That was over there in, in Los Angeles. You'll tell me it was better in Oklahoma, so <laughs> tell me about that. I promise you, I promise you, there is a place in Okarchi, Oklahoma, called yep. uh, Aishan's Bar. Uh, it's actually Aishan's Bar, and it is the oldest bar in Oklahoma, and they make the best fried chicken I think I, you'll ever anybody will ever eat anywhere. Don't you think, Rob? They're pretty good. I mean, it is. It, it, it's been on you know the Food Network and and all that um but it, it and it's the oldest bar and you go in there you get chicken they have they have a few other things but um your drinks are either beer uh soda pop they don't have tea they don't have it's coffee water, yeah yeah beer, water beer, beer water yeah pop. and your the soda pops the the colas are just cans they don't have a fountain or anything they just and if you and, and there's a big sign that says no, we don't have tea, we don't have coffee, <laughs> so. <laughs> but see, it's good. So it, yeah. it beats the colonel. Then the colonel doesn't oh, get yeah. looking over. Yeah, the colonel. No. The colonel Kentucky Fried. He doesn't yeah. get a. He, yeah, I mean, you, you know, that's your, you know, it, it, when you when you had kids, um, it was cheap and easy to feed a feed a family with a bucket of chicken you know <laughs> so yeah. greasy 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 chicken is it, yeah, <laughs> so. is it called is it called kentucky fried kitten over there <laughs> <laughs> only in the uh, chinese part of town <laughs> <laughs> they're, all bad. They're all bad. all right you guys can uh at uh big rob it's on just twitter just, just go into here <laughs> but, <laughs> we better not tell you what they call them in china <laughs> oh no kentucky fried bat yeah sorry <laughs> but um also uh we wanted to know um do if minute work still tour and their lead singer you guys said does no what what's his well, name yeah colin, uh, hay. colin hay colin hay was the lead singer of uh, minute work actually boys i think he's Minute work still don't, they're not together. They haven't been for quite a long time. Uh, oh. But Colin Hay, he tours. I think I've got this right. I did watch a show where I'm pretty confident he, he tours America and probably also Europe as a single, um, you know, playing guitar, still singing his, his stuff, solo stuff. Oh. Uh, so, yes, Minute Work aren't, aren't uh, about anymore, but uh, Colin Hay still doing his thing. That does it. Least. Did he get his eye fixed? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Just a bit like, googly, isn't it? Yeah. He's a bit like the wrestler, isn't he? He looks uh, the the rock, is it? Yeah. He gets his eye. <laughs> 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 Well, just one of those eyes looks over to the right. I think it's his right eye that looks yeah. to the right. It's like, what are you yeah. looking at with that eye? And why is it just that eye that you're looking at that way? <laughs> but we also learned what a Vegemite sandwich yes. is too, right? Vegemite sandwich. Oh, Explain a my, Vegemite sandwich to everybody. Jeff, my, my, I'll, go, I'll go with this one, guys. It's my, my favorite. I, I have Vegemite on toast every morning. Um, and the secret... I. I, I see a lot of uh, Americans trying Vegemite and they, they get a spoonful and they stick it in their mouth, you know, like like some raspberry jam or something like that. And it's you can't eat it like that. The, the secret to Vegemite is is make sure you have plenty of butter and uh, a light a light spread of Vegemite. And, um, yeah, can't get past it. It's beautiful. We all, we all grow up on it uh, in Australia. As soon as, as soon as we're born, they slap some Vegemite on our foreheads. And uh, and uh, we're, we're called Australians, so yeah, the, beautiful. The English, we've always had a rivalry, fellas, with the English. And uh, as you would know, we were sent out on convict. Uh, they come out on convict boats, and uh, 
uh, on ships and that, and they, they stuck us down here, and that's why we're called Australia. They come up with Marmite just to compete against us, and oh, unfortunately, <laughs> Marmite looks similar, but it just doesn't cut the mustard as far as we're concerned. So Vegemite <laughs> is Australia, so that's it. <laughs> now, but you you even said if you if you um, because a friend of ours actually said that he'd had it before and it's terrible. And but you said if you if you put too much, it's not it's not it's not how you're supposed to eat it. So if you glob nah, it, it's it's not going to taste right, right? It's it's terrible if you if you eat too much. Of it. it's, it's absolutely disgusting, and that's what it's someone has to eat. It's all about the butter as well. It butter, is, yeah, you, yeah. Right, little Vegemite, nice on um, uh, little biscuits and that, isn't it, Jeff? How oh, you call it's it? Nice. Everything, yeah. Yeah, old quick biscuits, mate. Nice on this. Yes. Yeah, I've got to. i got to tell the boys though, Glenny, that uh, the reason that uh, we like the Vegemite so much is because it's uh, it's an ex- extract, um, and it's got a lot of vitamin B in it. And vitamin B is the main uh, main thing in beer. So anything that's got vitamin B in it's got to be good for you. And that's why I drink beer. <laughs> Exactly right. So, but we are going to we are going to find some of it somehow. Uh, I know it's you can buy it here. Uh, and, and just for our listeners, if you don't know wh- why we're asking about Vegemite sandwich, you got to go listen to Minute Work right. song. <laughs> All right, yeah. land down under, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. Vegemite sandwich. No, yes. which yes. made every you know in the eighties made everybody in the United States go, "What's a Vegemite sandwich?" What? Or, yeah. Or, they, yeah. We actually thought it was a mispronunciation of something, and then you know everybody started <laughs> talking about Vegemite sandwich. So, uh, if you can't if you can't find any boys, let us know, and we'll we'll post something over to you. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm that serious in my, in my Vegemite. We'll post it over to you. Okay. You, usually, a little bit of cheese with the Vegemite's nice. In what a sandwich? Ki- what kind of cheese? Ah, well, just just cheddar, like a okay. cheddar cheese. Just cheddar. <laughs> Rob, Rob just did his best impression did. of it you guys. Bad, it, it was bad. It was really bad. We don't have we don't have the same cheese as what you guys either. You you have yellow cheese over there. We we don't have yellow cheese over here. Really? Mm. Mm. It's all that's white. Just, that's just un-American. <laughs> Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheese is American cheese, right? <laughs> okay. It's All just right. a it's just a cream color. Cream our, color. our cheese. It's uh, that you guys have got you know really really bright so, yellow sort of color. So cheese. I mean, so, but it, it, so it's white cheddar. You have mozzarella, Colby, all yeah. that. So yeah, how do you know the yeah, difference? Just, I mean, if you're at the store, it's all the same color. <laughs> we got to be color coded. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the the packaging actually tells you what it is. Uh, well, it does here too, but it, it's easier to walk up. I, I I know I'm walking to the cheddar cheese if I go to the yellow side of the the cheese side the cheese aisle. Yeah, okay. You know, if yeah. I go to the white side of the cheese aisle, that's um, mozzarella and um, oh, uh, all the it's all the Italian cheeses are white. At least that's yep. the way it is yeah, in America. Yeah, and all that yeah. business. Yeah, so Avardi, yeah, the only, Gorgonzola. The only yellow cheese we've got over here, I think Glenn would be on the McDonald's cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which, by the way, was, is the, probably the worst cheeseburger in America, just so you know. Is that yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You know, when, I mean, we, I, I mean, when we was on... Yeah, sorry. A yeah. McDonald's <laughs> cheeseburger, anything from, you know, when you're a kid, you lived for it. But uh, pretty much McDonald's, when you get into your early uh, adulthood, it's uh, drunk food. I mean, you know, it, it was it was it was cheap. You're drunk, you know. You get some McDonald's and eat it. But on a normal day, nobody nobody yeah. in their right mind goes and eats at McDonald's on a, <laughs> on a regular day. I think I eat a cheeseburger. Yeah, I think the young Australians, they still do it over here, but that's after a, a big night out. I think they go and have McDonald's the next morning. But for us, a uh, little bit getting older in life, uh, no, I don't go there at all, mate, either. <laughs> yeah. If I'm going to get a burger, I'll either, as a matter of fact, that's what we cooked tonight for dinner. Was some, we had some burgers, but if I'm going to go out for a burger, there's a, um, what is it, uh, Bubba's, is it Bubba's Burger Bar, the new one here in town? You've been there with me, Rob. Don't look at me like that. I hate it when Rob Bubba's looks at me. Burger <laughs> Bar? I've yeah. never been to a place called Bubba's Burger Bar. Yeah, you have. It's over there by Torchy's Tacos. Huh. 
Oh my lord! Bad Torchy's daddies. Tacos. Yeah, it's called to- bad daddies. Bad daddies. <laughs> yeah, See, I told you. Bad da- bad daddies burger bar, and then yeah, Torchy's Tacos is a is a you know taco place. So <laughs> <laughs> naturally, now, yeah. I'm to ask you, fellas, uh, Rob and both of you, Rob and Terry. But when you one thing I noticed when I went to America, uh, and I'm going back, but you guys, I reckon we're pretty good eaters over here, but. When I went over there, everything's big. Like, when you get a burger there, it's huge. When you get any meal, if it's southern fried chicken, it used to, I'm going back a little bit, but it was everything was in big portions. Is that still the, the same way? Is that the American way, or uh, have you uh, cut down a little bit? Cut down. Why would we cut down? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the American way. That's the, one of our favorite uh, barbecue spots is down in Davis, Oklahoma. It's a uh, what about an hour, hour and a half drive from here? Yeah, maybe yeah. the best barbecue in the world. Yeah, you, it, <laughs> if you t- if you and your wife go there and you re- order like you normally would, well, I want you know, let's say you want a two meat, you want ribs and brisket, and um. You know, you get your two sides with it, um, and your wife gets something. Well, that's enough food. They bring out enough food for about eight people mm-hmm. on oh, that. Wow. So when me and my wife go now, we just order the 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 three meat, you know, dinner, which is for one. But they'll actually bring a plate, and it comes out on a tray. Yeah, I mean, literally. And you're still taking stuff home. Yeah, you're still taking stuff home. So, um, yeah. So that's pretty much the American way. Yeah. And have you uh, have you had chicken fried steak before? Chicken fried steak. Yeah. No. Okay. no. <laughs> well, chicken fried steak is basically a, a steak. It's uh, tenderized and deep fried like chicken. Okay. Right. And it's served, okay. with, it's served with white gravy on top. And there there is a uh, restaurant in a little town just south of Norman here Carl, uh, in Noble, Oklahoma called Kendall's Restaurant. And, um, the thing is the, the chicken fried steak is probably the size of a Frisbee. It's, it's a little bigger than a dinner plate. Yeah. And it hangs right. and, that, and that's the small, you can get the large and it comes with two of those. So you guys grow big chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, in, in America, if pretty much, and especially around here in Oklahoma, if you, if you can batter it and deep fry it and put gravy on it, people will eat it. Oh yeah. I mean, this is just that simple. I don't know if you can do that with Vegemite though. Place, yeah. uh, I think, I think there's place in, um, I know, uh, up in, on the Gold Coast of Australia, there's I think there's another couple of places. But if you walk in and you get you ask for a steak, they'll actually if you can eat one of the steaks. It's not an outback, by the way. But, that's <laughs> one. but uh, it, it's, it's obviously a big steak, but again the size of a plate. But if you can get through it, they'll give it they'll give it to you for nothing. No. Yeah. So you don't pay for it. In other words, if you can eat it, yeah. right? I'd, I'd, I'd be struggling. <laughs> well, there there is a place in Texas, um, in Amarillo, Texas, uh, called Big Tech Steakhouse. They have a seventy-two ounce sirloin <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> that if you can eat it and all the sides with it, it's free. And <laughs> yeah, I, I've watched a guy eat it, and, and you have to eat it in an hour, and it comes with a baked potato uh, salad. And you get all the drink and some rolls and you have to eat it all. And <laughs> this thing look, I mean, it is the, it is just a, a glob of meat is all it is. And, but people, people they, go there people and do it. Done it sure have. They've done it in, in record time. It's actually about 62 ounces of steak and about 10 ounces of fat. Yeah. <laughs> well, so do they, do they throw in a free trip with the paramedics over there? To the <laughs> no, <laughs> they should. <laughs> <get> no. <laughs> But uh, so, uh, um, you know, American food. What is, what is a an Australian delicacy, or just a you know, if I go to Australia and go to a family diner or a family restaurant there, what what would what would we order that would we probably would never get in in the United States? Oh, jeez, we, we're pretty simple, aren't we, Glenn? We just normally have steaks or chicken schnitzel or parma. Wait, chicken schnitz? What? Okay, okay you said what? Chicken schnitzel? Yeah, it's just. A schnitty. It's a, it's a, 
it's a chicken chicken breast that's been pounded out and tenderized, and then they coat it in crumbs and, and deep fry it, basically. Mm, well, okay. So the salad, it's it's like any any place. Uh, fish obviously is a big thing in Australia. Yeah. yeah. So we obviously we've got good fishing, especially especially down here in Tassie too. We have things called. I, I don't know if, if you get them over there. Obviously, you get prawns over there, don't you? Yeah. Prawns? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, shrimp. we get called scallops. Mm-hmm. I'm not right. a scallops fan, but we You get. love scallops. Oh, you do get them? Yeah, we can, but I don't like them. So. No, no. <laughs> Delicacy uh, here in Tasmania. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, mm, what right. else is there, Jeff? There's, uh, oh, i tell oh, you what. Oh, so Tasmanian, in Tasmania, you call them lobster. We get, no. We've got a big thing here called crayfish. A Tasmanian crayfish, they're huge. They're a, they're a, a, a delicacy. So if you come to a, if you can afford it, because everything here is dear, but uh, if you get a crayfish over here, that's that's nice. Crayfish oh. more or something like that. But seafood's yeah, a big seafood's a big thing down here. Yeah. yeah in Australia, in general. Yeah. The, I would the other, especially the other in Tasmania. Huge, the other huge thing, guys, is uh, the meat pie. Love a meat oh, pie. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Meat pie. Okay, explain. I don't know what and a meat pie is. <laughs> In my mind, I can see a meat pie, but it's probably not what a meat pie is. It's uh, it's a, roughly, it's it's round. It, it'll fit in, in your hand, um, and it's pastry pastry cased. So it's it's, it's pastry cased full of, um, like, flaky meat. pastry full of meat and gravy and you can have it with mushrooms and onions and tomatoes and yeah tomato sauce to, on top sauce on, ketchup. you got to have sauce on it yeah ketchup Beautiful. you call it got to have ketchup on it yeah. <laughs> tomato sauce <laughs> okay ketchup sauce <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, also since you guys are from Tasmania we had some Tasmanian devil questions for y'all so mm. um and you confirmed that Tasmanian devils are pretty ferocious or mean. If and, you get and Tasmania is the only place that they're located too, right? I well, yeah. except, except for zoos, there will be some right, zoos right. around that have them. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, Go ahead, yeah, they they are they are ferocious. Yes, if you if you um, you certainly wouldn't want to go to a zoo or something like that and try and pick one up. Uh, I know the handlers pick them up by the tail. Uh, but the obviously the babies or the baby um, Tasmanian devils, you often see them. Uh, you know the the zoo handlers and that will pick them up and cuddle them. But as they get a little bit bigger, those nice big stakes that you were talking about over oh. there, they'd rip one of them apart in no time. So very, uh, yeah, you're very certainly strong jaws in the in the wild. But uh, as I probably pointed out. Fellas, they're um, they're been in a little bit of a problem there with a, a thing called a face tumor. The Tasmanian devils could be extinct if they don't get to the bottom of it, oh. and they've spent a lot of money on uh, scientists and that trying to cure this face tumor that hmm. they've that they've got over here. So, but that's why, as Jeff pointed out, there they're extending to other parts of the world now. And they're also sending them to other parts of Australia to zoos to get looked after, uh, and hopefully they can, uh, you know, get past this uh, facial tumor that the uh, Tassie Ooh. Devils. Yeah, keep them, keep them going. Yeah. So, and Rob had a question. He realized he didn't answer. He didn't ask you guys last week about the Tasmanian Devil. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's more of a joke. They obviously they don't spin, right? <laughs> they don't spin around when they're mad and chase you. You know, like you know, we talk about Bugs Bunny is the only you know, and the Tasmanian Devil you know spun around like a little tornado. Do they do that when they chase you, or is that just dumb cartoons? Uh, they they do run around crazy in in the in the zoos. They're, they're a very rare animal. It's not, it's not like you'll you'll go out on the street and you see them, you know, in parks or in, in the bush and things. I I'm a I'm a rep, so I travel with the, the whole state of Tasmania. So I, probably in the last seven years, I might have seen probably four or five. Um, okay, so they're, no, they're not just animals. around. You're not going to walk no. out? No. Okay, no, yeah, you're not no. going to walk out in your backyard and go, crap! No, <laughs> no, no, definitely not. No. 
they come out at night. They, they normally come out at night, Neat. So if there's any roadkill, uh, you know, from cars and all that sort of thing, because they're carnivorous, they'll, uh, they'll clean up the scraps. Uh, they've been known to have a go at sheep. Um, they'll pull down sheep sometimes. Uh, anything that's left, they'll, they'll eat the bones, the lot. Oh. So it doesn't matter what it is. They'll eat the bone, the meat, the whole thing. Jeez. So, you know, <laughs> <see it. laughs> All right. so ba- I guess the equ- the equivalent in, in the in the US would be a badger, wouldn't you think, Rob? Yeah, it would be like a badger, very much like a badger. Yeah. They got they got really big uh teeth on the side and uh they got strong they they are built strong. They're uh, the back hind legs and that. Um uh, uh, and they can actually move fairly they're, they're, they can move fairly quick, actually. A lot yeah. of people think they're slow, but they can actually move quite fast, a Tasmanian devil. So, yeah. But yeah. they're black, generally black with a white marking around their chest. And, I thought you were uh, going to say a white, a white mask on their face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what they have to put them on now because of the coronavirus, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All the. All the animals here have got masks on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, well, guys. Tiger, oh, that's... Know, a... <laughs> we, we, just got, we just got news that there's a tiger over there with a grain of virus. Oh, yep. Yes. Yeah. Holy, Rob, Rob just pulled up a picture of one. Yeah. That's a bad looking little dude right there. <laughs> yeah, he looks kind of mean. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. was a there was a tiger uh, at the uh, I think it was it a new, one of the New York zoos came down with. But I mean, I don't know that anybody's surprised. It's an animal virus, so he's got to stop licking doorknobs in China. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, it's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> now, speaking of ti- now, ha- you guys have Netflix over there, correct? Yep. Yeah. Have, yep. have y'all haven't seen? Have Have y'all watched Tiger King yet? Uh, yeah, started watching it. Uh, okay. Okay. Joe Exotic is from Texas. He lived in Oklahoma. Just so y'all know that. Okay. <laughs> Please do not judge Oklahomans based on that guy. <laughs> so, just so you know, you know uh, he did have. It's the it's the number one Netflix show in Australia, believe it or not. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, yeah, oh it's number one. Yeah, just remember when you know when you watch it, it it's you know that it's not representation of Oklahoma. No, yeah. I, I, he's he's betting on both sides, isn't he? That guy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think it's just yeah. one side. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he's a soccer. He's a soccer player. <laughs> got, no, sorry, yeah. sorry to your fans out there who like soccer. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it, it's um, yeah, you know, it's one of those shows where you know you'd heard of the guy. I mean, he ran for governor of Oklahoma, and it, when you watch it, you need to understand that they say that he got nine uh, percent or ten percent, something like that, or 20, maybe it was even twenty percent of the votes in the governor's race that is not true no, okay it, it was he didn't even make the governor's race it was the runoff for the libertarian um ticket that he got that so it which is you know probably 30 people in the state of oklahoma voted for him but they put it like oklahomans 30 percent of the oklahoma population voted for him no we didn't okay <laughs> so yeah but yeah that, did you, did you- Donald Trump, you guys? Do what? Did, did you vote for Donald Trump over there? We don't talk politics. Oh, steady, steady on. The quickest way to, to, to piss off any fans in America is to talk politics. So yeah, we, we try so. to we we try to avoid even any talk of politics. And, you know, with the coronavirus, we brought it up a little bit. You know, nothing I mean I mean, yeah. crying out loud, I don't think anybody knows how to deal with this stuff. They're, everybody's doing the best they can and, you know, and uh, hope we'll put, hope we'll, everything works we'll out. We'll stick it back in the vault then. We'll stick it, we'll stick it in the vault with the soccer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't talk politics and soccer. So There you go. Um, right, there you go. Now, one Pretty of the things, before we get into Australian football, let's talk beer, okay? Um, right. So, uh you know, since your guys are, you know, the Friday frothy, obviously, um, you're beer drinkers. Um, 
And we were shocked to find out that Foster's beer is not Australian Ooh. for beer. Because that's yeah. how they sell it over here. It's Australian and it's nasty over here. <laughs> it's yeah. terrible. It, 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 was, it was nasty over here. We we it started out in Australia and they, they tried to sell it to us and, and no one would buy it in Australia. Um, so they took it over to the UK, to, to England, and the, the English love it. So it's still an Australian beer, but uh, not sold in Australia. Australians won't drink it. It's so, right. probably been made that many different times and that many different ingredients put in it. But the, I think the Poms, are, they, they like it, so they can keep it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not for us. Yeah, I, I was us. actually, you know, I asked you guys what beers y'all drank, and I went to, there's a there's a big liquor store, which are called bottle stores over there in bottle Australia. Shops. Bottle, yeah, bottle, bottle shops. Bottle, bottle, bottle shops. shops. Yeah. They're called yeah. liquor stores here. And so I went to one that has, they have a big variety of beers. And I mean, you know, that if you're looking for something in Norman, they probably have it if it has it. And they didn't have either one of y'all's two's beers that I was asking about, but they went, we have Foster's. That's the only Australian beer. So I had to, I had to, uh, to tell them it's not an Australian beer. And the guy was like, well, yeah, it's an said Australians don't drink it. I know some guys from Australia. They don't drink it. It's exported. That's all it is. It's so don't call it an Australian beer. <laughs> so yeah, I tried to, uh, right. but again, it's advertised that Foster's is Australian for beer. So we just assumed all beer in Australia tasted like, you know, crocodile piss <laughs> because it was <laughs> nasty. So what's, what's your, what's your beers, beers of choice? Okay, I, I well, I drink one called uh, Victoria. Obviously, it's Victoria, Victoria Bitter. They call it VB. Okay, so that's what I drink. That's uh, it comes from a brewery in Victoria called Carlton United Brewery. And as you guys know, there is a football site called Carlton, and that's a suburb in in Melbourne. I don't know why I even told you that, but there you go. <laughs> well, you just you, you you just told me something, Glenn. I didn't know that. Carlton United yeah, isn't Carlton. There you go. So it's Carlton United Brewery is a is a big brewery that that sells um, a lot of probably a lot of beers around Australia, uh, and then each each state of Australia have their own type of beer. Um, where you were from, Jeff, up in Brisbane, up up in Queensland. Yep, they have four X. They drink four X up there. It's another beer, but they've got their own brewery up there. Then in Western Australia, there's one called um, uh, Swan, Swan Lager, and that's because there's a that the the river through there is called the Swan, and the the brewery used to be on that. So pretty much like what you guys would have over there. Probably each state has their own. You know their own beer that they they prefer down here in Tassie. We have one called Cascade, Cascade Draft, Cascade Blue. Um, but of course, as Jeff would tell you, we have a lot of boutique beers. Yeah, and a lot of guys are making their own yeah. type of beers. A lot of the breweries, they're going for all that sort of thing now, and they <laughs> they experiment what they do and. That's what me and Jeff do. We just sit there and drink a lot of it, don't we, mate? It's good. <laughs> I say, I, I, I like what you got. You call it boutique beer in in a, in, in the U.S. Yeah. It's called craft beer. That's yeah, that's right. that that's the thing now. Yeah. It's craft. Beer. All these little breweries are popping up all over, yeah. um, all over the place, and you know they have and they have their little you know funny named beer. Well, um, now we've got flat tire is one of the craft beers here in Oklahoma. Rob, what's some other ones? I'm trying to think of some, you know, um, there's some, there's some, most of them are pretty odd, odd named. There's Mustang. Yeah, the that, craft beers. Yeah. Craft yeah. beers. Yeah. Uh, yeah all dead. I, can I ask you guys a dumb, dumb American question? Sure. What was the brewery that Laverne and Shirley worked in? at Milwaukee? Shots. <laughs> Shots, Shots Brewery. Shots. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> yeah, it's not even a. It's not even a thing now. I don't think. Yeah, it's not even a thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that we knew that. that so, the fact that we knew that so quickly, Rob, is scary. Yeah. And we are children of the you know late seventies, late seventies, yeah. So, yeah. Shots. Was that a real? Was that real? 
I think it was, but I don't think it is anymore. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, the, you know, the the beer, uh, you know, the number one selling beer in the U.S. is, is Budweiser. Actually, it's Bud Light yeah. made by Budweiser, but... Don't understand yeah. that, Jerry. Mm. Don't understand <laughs> why people drink... Why? Why are people drinking light beer? It's, uh, it, it's, it's, two, it's one in, five out. <laughs> <laughs> That's about yeah, right. Yeah, but it, it's, you know... We eat. The reason why is like you guys said. We have these giant plates of food, so we drink light beer to make ourselves feel better. Okay, <laughs> it's like there, there's people there's people in the U.S. who who will get a you know a full deep dish pizza and a diet coke. What sense does that make? <laughs> so people are drinking. You know, people are eating this big fat hamburger and drinking a light beer to make themselves feel better. I guess, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, the the big the big thing ha- was ha- was the uh, oh I forgot the name of it again Rob that Caleb drinks all the time the uh, Michelob Ultra yeah Michelob Ultra which is ultra ultra light beer yep but now the big thing is uh, seltzer beer seltzer beer I haven't even tried one so. yeah it, it's no. uh, it's it's got some type of seltzer water champagne or something in it. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and flavored, I don't like flavored beer. I don't like any flavored beer other than beer flavored beer, but, but oh, yeah. these seltzer, they're like, <laughs> there's like bubbly water. They come in a little skinny and you know, my son, Caleb, my youngest son, he's a millennial. He's in that age of everybody. That's, that's all they're drinking right now is seltzer beer. I'll, op- I'll go open okay. up my, my fridge and there's Budweiser in there. And then there's this little 12 pack of seltzer beer. So I'm going to. I'm going to get myself in trouble here, Terry, and I, and I hope this doesn't uh, offend anyone out there. But it's, I think, and I and I, I say that with tongue in cheek because I don't care. Um, <laughs> is this is this beer marketed towards soccer players and possibly push bike riders that get dressed up in their their lycra and go for a ride on a Sunday morning? It comes in a pink can. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, they they have you know raspberry, blueberry, strawberry seltzers i mean it, it, it's um i don't know i mean it's this generation of kids i mean whatever it is that gets thrown out there that's new i mean i don't know oh. if y'all had the situation over in australia did you did you have kids uh eating tide pods oh boy no you know what a <laughs> no. Ti- do you know what a tide pod is no okay it's a, a tide po- tide is a um laundry detergent laundry detergent and they come in these they started making them in these little pods it's you know a a dissolved wrapper basically and somebody having some, a dishwasher yeah, yeah yeah you know yeah, yeah, so somebody yeah, somebody told some kids that if you eat a tide pod it'll get you high so guess what started happening i got high no, they didn't get high. <laughs> they they got just sick. they got sick because they were eating Tide Pod. <laughs> so I bet they don't have. I bet they don't have coronavirus now. Though. <laughs> but yeah, this, clean on the inside. Yeah, th- this generation of kids, it's real. I mean, it's in America. It, it, it's when when the new alcohol comes out. Like I said, it was ultra for a while. Now it's this uh, self. Well. It was also uh, margarita beer, beers. Uh, what about that Zima stuff that came out? Yeah, that, Zima. dropped a Jolly Rancher in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, uh, but my son, Caleb, who does the podcast with us, was on y'all show with us. He, yes. He's, he's yep. uh, you know, he'll drink, you know, Budweiser, Bud Light. Caleb, he'll drink any, you know, basically he'll drink anything you put in front of him. But if he, he comes walking in with his uh, seltzer beer because that's the thing that age group is doing now so it's 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 amazing it's amazing that we we're talking about beer isn't it yeah. and uh, none of it none of it sounds like beer at all does it no and it doesn't <laughs> taste like if beer you're gonna drink water drink water yeah or if, you, if you as you say if you're gonna drink uh uh i know jeff's partial to it and that and i don't mind it sometimes a bit of top shelf but you know like you get uh jack daniels over there oh yeah we went We'll have a bit of Jack Daniels or something, and uh, a bourbon, uh, yeah. you know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, if you want, if you want to get uh, elephant trunk, in other words, you want to get drunk. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what you do. If you want a result, you drink your spirits. Yeah. And if you want it, and if you like the beer, 
and you want to get a big guts like me, you just yeah. keep drinking beer. There you go. <laughs> hey, we call it white girl wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of elephant drunk, we call it white girl wasted. Yeah, we get white girl wasted. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know if you've ever seen a white girl in America wasted. It's funny. <laughs> But um, I'll tell you what is funny, uh, going to the races, I'll never I forget that. Say. You have your horse racing uh -huh. over there. We, we we go to the horse racing. I can remember a big thing in Melbourne that, that I went to, and um, they have a, a day there which is a ladies' day, and it's called Oaks Day. And Oaks Day is a big, a big meet of uh, horse racing that they have. It's like a carnival. And this is one of the carnivals on one special on one particular day where all where all the women get all dressed up with their fascinators and all their you know all dressed up to the nines and you you get on a tram and you go into the races and I'll never forget going in there with a couple of blokes and you know they they look like they're models half of these ladies and then they get to the races they get straight down onto the the line to watch the horses when they finish they get their champagne out. And they got their high heels on and everything. It's about 30 degrees. And in race two, they're looking a little bit worse for wear. <laughs> By race three, they're sitting on their backside. By race four, their legs are up in the air, mate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shoes, shoes are off. <laughs> they don't get they don't get to race nine and ten. Put it that way. <laughs> gets pretty messy. Gets pretty messy. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, but, um, just, to, just to let. Just to let you guys know, I've just poured my first beer for the day. So, uh, and what time is it? 12 At 12 o'clock? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. It's afternoon, so. Um, We're safe. Now, um, there's a friend of ours that comes to our, our football tailgates. Um, um, Lori, what is it that she drinks? Uh, Clamato? Do you have Clamato over there? Uh, I need you in the doctor's surgery. Was that called <laughs> Clamato? Chlamyd no, sorry. No, no, not chlamydia. No. Yeah, you need some. Uh... Okay, sorry, I didn't want to go there. No, no, it is. This is, and people actually, it's sold in cans. Bud Light Clamato. It is Bud Light beer, clam juice, tomato juice, and tomato oh. juice. No. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no. It, it, and it even smells like rancid. But I've man, never even smelled it. Ugh. I, I tasted it one time, and yeah, it, it's horrible. But no, nope, you'll see people walking around drinking it. But okay, yeah. let's get into some Australian rules football. Okay. Best game in the world. Oh, sh I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Rob just scared me. Rob started looking up, took his headphones off, and it started thundering here. We got rain. We got a thunderstorm oh, really? coming in. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> You so, get a blackout and lose your show. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <clears throat> okay. First off, um, kind of give us, you know, I, I used to watch it. It used to come on ESPN. Uh, I, I can't, you know, I can't tell how far back things are anymore. People tell, you know, there's movies that are 20, you know, 20 years old, 30 years old now, we're like, that was just out four years ago. So we, we have no concept of time behind us. <laughs> but yep. I used to watch ESPN had come on on like Saturday nights or Friday nights at 11 o'clock, and I started watching it. And it fin it went away, but it was enjoyable to watch because, number one, it wasn't soccer. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, and, and even though you know, I've watched rugby, but – Rugby is too confusing to me. I don't know why. But for some reason, um, Australian rules football just kept my attention. So, um, and actually, we have it up here on the YouTube on the, the AFL, right? Yeah, Australian a Football Aust League. Australian yeah. Football League. Yep. So, give us, um, you know, a, a dumb American analogy. Tell us about the game in as simple as terms as you can. For one, it's played on a you. gigantic field. That's that's the first thing that we all notice. All right, I'll, Glenny, so, I'll, I'll give a I'll give a brief outline of, of the game and, and where it's come from. Um, basically, it started off in in one state in Australia called Victoria, and it was the VFL, the Victorian Football League, and that ran from eighteen ninety seven to nineteen eighty nine. Uh, and, and in 1990, they decided they wanted to make it a national competition, so we get teams all over. 
of the country, of Australia, except for Tasmania. We still don't have a team here. Um, there's 18 teams in the in the competition, which are all over Australia, and they play 23 rounds of uh, of football, and then they go into our finals. And uh, there's 22 team members on a team, and 18 play at once on the field. And Glennie, you can describe the fields and and a bit of the play, how it works. Okay, so with the with the game itself, as Jeff said, there's 18 on the field at one time, so that's 18. Uh, and then obviously opposition with 18 players. You've got a probably like in rugby, oh, sorry, in in uh, American football, which you guys call gridiron. Gridiron. Oh, gridiron. Which I think that's yeah. what Rob and I are going to start calling it. I believe that we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, why, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, why do we call it gridiron? What, what is it then? It's American football. Yep. Yeah, it's well. I mean, some in a lot of the old, you know, if you watch any of the old um, NFL films and stuff like that, uh, because the film the the field is a grid, you know, it's marked off in yep. five and ten yards. There, you know, cool. it, people that's kind of a slang for it, you know. Or you'll hear them, you know, you know, the Packers line up on the gridiron, you know. So, yeah, gotcha. yep. but you guys, that's what that's how what you referred to it is is basically grid. Mm. You have you, Australian rules game football. Game. You have Australian rules football, which is football to you, and then rugby and gridiron, which yeah, we kind of like. And that. then we have we have a lot of people trying to say that football is actually called soccer. Soccer's football, which we no. we won't have any part of. That yeah, either. no, mm-mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any rate, jumping, jumping back. So, so your listeners know. So you've got your, you've got your, uh, your back line. So you've got. So if we're talking one side at the moment, so say they're called Richmond as a side over uh, an, an AFL side uh, that play in the league. They just say that Richmond. They start off. They've got two guys that play next to the goals or the back defence, and they're back pocket players. The guy that's in the middle, he's a full back. Then you go and you're coming down the ground, you've got a half back, still defence. You've got two half backs and a centre half back. He's the one in the middle. Then you've got two wingmen. That's the centre line or the centre part like you would have in American football. So you've got two guys that stand on a wing uh, and then one in the centre. And then as you get down the ground, it's the same thing. Then you've got your forwards. You've got two half forwards. And a centre half forward, he's the guy that stands in the middle. And then you've got a forward line, a full forward line, which is two guys uh, in the in the forward pockets and one who's called a full forward. Usually your full forward's the one that kicks a lot of the goals, but in Australian rules, anyone can kick goals. Yeah. Uh, what's um, a goal worth? What's, what's a goal worth, Glenn? A, a goal, if you kick a goal, it's worth it's worth six points. So if you kick it, so you've got two big uprights, and if you kick it through those two big uprights, it's it's a goal. They call it a goal, as you would six points. If you kick it through the point, it's obviously one. It's one. No, one just, point. Just a quick interjection question here. It doesn't matter if it yep. rolls through or if it flies through in the air. It's six points, right? It's six points. If right. if it hits the post, if it hits the goal post, it's classed as a point two. So yeah, if, you, and- if you hit the Kick it into the post, it's classed as a point. If someone touches it on the line, but it's over, well, then it's a goal. And we have, like you would, we have video, you know, the referees go upstairs and, you know, there's a lot of controversy sometimes whether it's a goal or it was touched or and all those sort of things. But uh, we don't stop the play so much. They just do it after. They give a result. It goes upstairs um, to, like, a... Uh, commentary box they look at the cameras comes back down it was a goal and that's basically it you've got oh, sorry you've got a a, a ruckman uh, so in that middle part of the ground so when i said there's a sentiment and a, and a wingman it, you've got a, a big bloke uh, like you would have in in american football as you said they're all big as you've explained to me they're all roughly you know what 130 kilos plus and more uh, we we have our ruckman normally are about you know, uh, around about six eight, six nine, some are seven. Uh, we've got an American over there at the moment who plays for a side called Collingwood. He's seven foot. Uh, normally they've got a good leap. Uh, they can jump. 
and uh, the game starts from the middle of the ground. Sort of. When, so to start sort a game of. of football, they blow this when all the players are in position. They blow the siren. You've got an umpire who bounces the ball, and then a ruckman will tap the ball to either a rover, ruck rover, or centerman. And the game, as I've explained, you can kick it backwards, you can kick it forwards, but the ultimate part of the game is to kick a goal. Oh. So that's that's about it in a nutshell, the, really. The, the start of the, the, the game, or the start of the, the bounce-up win, is, is similar to like a, a tip-off or basketball, isn't it, basically? It's like basketball. It's a little bit like basketball, but you, you punch it. Instead of tapping, you can tap, you can punch it, and if the opposition's in the way, you can punch them too while you're doing it. So, <laughs> no. they, so that is legal. Then, okay. <laughs> but when yeah, you're well, and you can run with it, but you have to bounce it every how many? It's, so it's every every. So you can't go any more than ten ten meters. You've got to bounce the ball. So if you if you carry it further than that, the umpire will pull it up and he'll, and he'll, he'll pay a, a free kick to the opposition if you carry it more than 10 metres. But the rules are that you can tackle around the waist. You can grab them by the back of the jumper and sling them. Pretty much like in American football, you can you can tackle them to the ground, you can throw them to the ground. The only thing they are trying to do, back in the bad days, you could hit pretty much anywhere. <laughs> it didn't matter. But now, obviously, with um, you know the game, they're trying to get kids to be playing the game like they always, you know, like we did when we were younger. And, uh, you know, they're trying to protect the head. So if you've got your head down, you're not allowed to run through with a hip and shoulder, as they call it, through the guy anymore. You've got to try and get low to the ball and, and get the ball. But um, And also, the, also, Glenn, sorry to interrupt, also no helmet or pads. Right. No right. helmet or pads. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up too. Is that you know because we talked about it on y'all's show of as far as you know CTE and concussions and the fact that that uh, Australian football is played with no pads. Um, is there talk out over there of you know some type of padding or or are they just trying nah. to? Because we just watched a guy just get knocked smooth out yeah. just there, didn't he? <laughs> he was out like a light. Um, nah. Yeah. There are a, a couple, there are a couple of guys who've uh, who've suffered a, a fair bit of concussion um, and they're still playing the game and, and they they're now playing in what those little uh, rubber rubber helmets yeah like a, like a bike uh, helmet like but, yeah. you know, like the old bicycle helmet yeah. the um, you know not a, not a full helmet like you would no. in, in in American football they're more like a cyclist helmet you know where they used to be the old cyclist helmets they wear the, those but it's only like guys. As as Jeff said, that are being concussed a lot, and yeah. they're they're told by their doctors to wear them. Otherwise, a lot of them probably can't play. They they do really. If you get knocked out now, or you get hit in the head, um, a lot of the teams now will will take you off the ground. And if they they have their doctors on the side, as you would in American football, if they look at you and they say no, they won't put you back on. Yeah. So they well, they're, well, they're really tough on this now and they uh, they make sure that if you aren't any good two weeks down the track you don't come back yeah, yeah so you know they've good. started a deal here in the in the u.s with american football or gridiron yeah. football is um, the referee can actually send you out of the game if he doesn't think you're right and you'll see some games the referee will walk over and listen to the huddle and they have the referee has pulled quarterbacks or running yeah. backs out of the game go uh-uh you got to go get checked and if they, if they're, if, if you can't the, formulate a sentence, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you better go sit down. With, uh, down which, back. which reminds you know today because there's no sports on. I was watching the NFL Network and I was watching uh, a football life with Drew Bledsoe. You know he was the Patriots quarterback that got hurt, um, but uh, that brought in Tom Brady, and I forgot how bad he got hurt. This guy almost died. Yeah. Okay, but he he was oh. concussed and he was trying to to still play and he goes i knew i was in trouble when the play design was i had to check it to the left and he was talking to his running back and he goes i couldn't think of the word for left he couldn't say left he goes i was like trying to check down to it and he goes the word wouldn't form i couldn't remember what left was 
And yeah, I thought, so holy cow! <laughs> if I if I'd have been that bad, I you know I'm a I'm a wuss. I'll I'll be like, hey yo, um, I'm hurt. <laughs> Come get me. <laughs> I don't know that you would. Have been. <laughs> um, do you guys have a, a blood rule that like in in Australian rules now? Once upon a time, we went, you know, if you go back in you know, 10, 15 years ago, if you got punched, you could you could actually play if you had blood streaming from your nose or your face. And they stop that. So we have what's called a blood rule. So if you if you've got a you know, blood on your legs or your arm or your face, you actually you actually have to go off to be cleaned up. Um, I don't think. Do you do you guys have that in American? No. Yeah, oh. refs will pull people out if they got bloody nose and stuff or cut. They'll pull them out. Yeah, but I mean they they get patched up. But I mean you know you see these guys now they they wear the. It's that that rubber stuff that they get on, they put on their elbows and things like that to yeah. because that's where you know like receivers and running backs landed on their elbows. Those you know cut them all up, but um, uh, you know they they I, just get the guys off to you know stuff some cotton Terry. in their nostrils. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. But I just one question for you: right? Are all your grounds over there artificial turf, or do you have any that are that are nope. real turf? The University of Oklahoma's field is all natural. So, is it really? Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. The uh, Arizona Cardinals, even though they play in a dome, it is natural grass. Uh, yep. yep. That you know they their whole floor backs out. You know it comes. You know they're in Arizona. The the grass turf goes outside to grow. <laughs> it's on Ooh, it's on that's wheels. Crazy. Yeah, the ground wow. is on wheels. Um, wow. Some do, some don't. Yeah, a lot of. <clears throat> what's funny is the baseball field here is all artificial turf even the dirt part even of the, the dirt part is, is artificial, artificial turf, turf so yeah is that right yeah okay that's something we've learned i didn't know that but, mm, okay. yeah but they you know well, they, uh, well, yeah but uh Can I... now as far as the teams you know like you, you guys do have the uh wimpiest team <laughs> name in any sports <laughs> the sydney swans i mean we asked you guys this, but we didn't, you know, are swans that mean in Australia that we should fear them? Or are they like the Tasmanian devils? I mean, no. what, what the heck? <laughs> They're nice looking things, aren't they? Swans normally, aren't they? They're <laughs> delicate looking things, aren't they? But, uh, they give you a good honking. Like <laughs> but the, the, way that, the way that they they used to do some old cartoons, you know, back in the day when uh, actually the Sydney swans, as you call them, were, used to be called South Melbourne. And South Melbourne, uh, the, the team originated, obviously, as Jeff was pointing out, all sides. Um, it started in the Victorian Football League, uh, were from Victoria. And when they made it a national a national um, competition, uh, the, the South Melbourne Swans, as they were called, they were called the Swans because they played on an oval and it was... There was a lake at the back, and they called it the Lakeside Oval they played on. So they got the name the Swans, and that goes right way back. So that's how come they got the name. And then because they wasn't doing that well in Melbourne, they didn't get the funding. Um, they were str a struggling side with money. They moved to Sydney, Australia, and they became the Sydney Swans. Cool. So uh, that's how come they got that name, fellas. The other the other names that we have is like Essendon is called the Bombers. Um, uh, the Hawks, uh, uh, Hawthorne is called the Hawk. Um, Which is your team, Glenn? That's my team. Uh, Jeff, your team. You can keep North. going there and follow on with this. Yeah, North Melbourne Kangaroos. Um yeah, so we have the Melbourne Demons, we have the Richmond Tigers, the Fremantle Dockers. Don't know where that comes from. Was there the Carlton Blues? The Blues, but yeah, yeah, the Swans, pretty, uh, pretty ordinary name. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's not ordinary. It's 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 <laughs> sissy. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know if y'all know what that means, but you know, sissy, yeah, we do. girly. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Why would you know? I don't know. Why would you name your sports team that is you know? Rough as as AFL is the Swans, you the might as Swans. well put you might as well put them in a dress and <laughs> or, or call them Steelers. <laughs> Shut up! Oh! <laughs> I'm just joking, Terry. <laughs> so, um, how, okay, um, Jeff, you 
you're the um, uh, Melbourne, North Melbourne, uh, yes, kangaroos. kangaroos. Yeah, what, kangaroos. what, how did you become a fan of the? Do you call them roos or kangas or kangaroos? Yeah, yeah, all, all, all of the above, Terry kangas, the roos, um, Norths. Basically, I, I grew up as Glenn said in, in Queensland, which is the you know up the the eastern side of Australia. Uh, in, a, in a very dominated rugby league um, state where Australian, Australian rules football wasn't real, um, real, really known or played. Um, but because my father is from Tasmania, you know, it was in his blood. He made us play Australian rules football as, at a young age. And the team that I played for was uh, Blue and White Stripes. And um, as I grew up, there was a Blue and White Stripe team called North Melbourne. And uh, that's how I became... Uh, a fan, and uh, I think with my my background with football, we in Tasmania we grew up um, playing Australian rules football. In fact, one thing we never mentioned before: um, Tasmania was probably one of the strongest football sides in Australia, going mm. way back. And uh, a lot of good footballers, probably as you call them, Hall of Famers. Or your, your Tom Brady's. A lot of players have come from Tasmania, even even though it's an island. A lot of good footballers came from Tasmania, going back. And uh, so we grew up watching our local football here. And uh, we went to Victoria. I used to have black and white TV. Uh, Hawthorne had stripes, and I was only about five years old. And uh, Everyone looked the same, and I, I picked their little blonde-headed fella and uh, went for Hawthorne. There was no there was no real science to it, and I was following hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's, there's something that I've never heard from you before. You, you picked out a, a little blonde-haired fella. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that correct? <laughs> what, was that? what was that, mate? Is that correct that you picked what out a little blonde-haired fella? What's going on here? Because I was a little blonde-headed fella. <laughs> <laughs> when I had, that's, when I, that's when I had hair. Uh, no, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in those days, you didn't know who was who. I, I didn't come from Victoria, so here I, I obviously played and I played in in a, in a league down here, but and followed football here. But uh, Victoria, as Jeff pointed out, football originated from Victoria, and all the a lot of football that was put on TV came from Melbourne, Victoria. Oh, so you oh. followed a side. You had your, all the states throughout Australia followed their own. They always were strong. Like South Australia were a super strong um, football team. So was Western Australia. Tasmania was a strong side and Victoria. They were the four main sides, or main states, sorry, that started... And they used to have carnivals back in the day, and they they'd play carnivals to pick out who was the best state. Oh, sorry, the best, yeah, basically the best state in in Australia. Mm. Mm. And gone from there. So, uh, but yeah, football. Um, yeah, unlike you guys, see, you came from Oklahoma. You barrack for obviously your team there, or Dallas. I think one of you guys go for Dallas, don't you? And was it Dallas, Rob? Yeah, yeah, yeah Dallas the, Cowboys. Yeah, the Cowboys. Dallas, Dallas Cowboys and Pittsburgh. You know, it's the same. Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. here. So it's Pitts, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, yep. and uh, so yeah, that's that's basically how it all, all comes about. I mean, you know, if whatever your parents did too. I, I mean, when my father was alive, he he went for Collingwood. They are obviously a, so they're the Magpies over there in Victoria. Uh, I. You know, I mean, it was always a bit varied in the families who you actually barrack for, but uh, yeah, that, that's that's basically it. And I followed, I followed Australian rules all my life. So, uh, so, played it so how often do the, how often do the hawks and uh, kangaroos play each other every year? Well, it used to be quite a bit back in the day, but now it's only once uh, once or twice a year, Jeff. Twice? Yeah, once once or twice, depending on the draw. We've got a real stupid draw now with our football um, because we've got we've got 18 teams and they play 23 rounds. So some teams get to play some teams twice and some teams play the team once. So. once. <laughs> but yeah, look, normally Hawthorne and North Melbourne play uh, probably twice a year because it's a bit of a grudge match and... Um, 
I know what you're going to ask me, mate, and it's yeah. ugly. <laughs> so, so do y'all yeah. do y'all gather in the same uh, in the same dwelling to watch together, or we, do y'all watch? We, we used to. I used to get a little bit. Vague. I think I think Jeff got a little bit worried about what I was going to throw, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he wanted to watch the game, and, and I'd be yelling at the umpire or yelling at some. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think you got a little bit worried about me, but you've always said, oh, I'll, I'll catch you after the game, mate. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it gets pretty ugly. And who 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 has the uh, winning edge, the historically yeah. winning edge? Yeah, yeah, well, well, if you go well, Hawthorne uh, recently. If you go back, uh, North Melbourne and Hawthorne were couple of old clubs and that, but uh, probably Hawthorne, as far as grand finals, they've got more grand finals than North Melbourne, but uh, yeah, probably, uh, I'm trying to think, in the league, in Victorian football, I'd say probably uh, Melbourne, Richmond, Essendon, have probably won the most premierships. Oh, how, many, how, many, mm-hmm. how many premierships, how many flags has, has Hawthorne won, won Glenn? You probably can't count them. I probably can't count them up, mate. No, I, I, we, we did win three in a row there, and you sat through most of them with oh, me, mate. Oh, we, we won a three <laughs> week. <laughs> you oh, should know God. that. <laughs> Come on. Cut him off. Jeff, cut him off. That Jeff used to have. <laughs> Go ahead and rub it in just a little bit, Jeff. <laughs> just rub a little salt in there for you. We, Boys. We, we was a little bit like Tom Brady side the Patriots, and that uh, it just got you know like I was celebrating every year. God, I hate um, listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, not anymore. North Melbourne might get their go now. I don't know. It's all changed a little bit. So uh, Terry Terry uh, Rob, North Melbourne's won four grand finals in in what two hundred years, Glenn. <laughs> Pretty much. So you're kind of like you're you're basically the the Cleveland Browns of the AFL. Uh, that it hasn't ever won. So no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I I do go for the Buffalo Bills as well. So yeah, we're pretty that's much. that's pretty similar. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Now you got the similar. Now now it makes sense. So. <laughs> but I don't I don't look after little uh, little blonde boys. Though. That's what's <laughs> All right. So Get now you guys did touch on something. That's one of the things I wanted to ask you. How how young do you start playing football in Australia? Do, is it in your school systems that you have school teams, universities? Yeah, I, I can answer that. Look, it, it used to be, as I said, if, again, it's it's changed. It used to be everything was in the schools. Uh, it was played like uh, we have – the main sports in Australia when we were younger, um, it was probably uh, football, Australian rules, football, cricket. I don't know if you have ever seen cricket. I'm probably opening up another can of worms there. But uh, <laughs> cricket, we, cricket, we, we, we do, okay, we we, we we you know we know what cricket is. It's fish bait. That's what we used to fish with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some people that. cover them with chocolate and eat them. But. <laughs> You go down and get some catfish with it, don't you? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they were they were a couple of the main sports. We we used to have basketball, uh, obviously not like American basketball, but uh, we we did have basketball. Uh, soccer what age? wasn't played very much. What age uh, did you start, Glenn? Huh? What age did you start? I started when I was six. I started probably when I was, yeah, look, it's probably about yeah, five, I suppose. Yeah, right around about yep. five. Yeah, yep. I suppose, yeah. What about you guys with the uh, gridiron? No, with gridiron? You... I was trying not to say gridiron. <laughs> <because I'm> probably... <laughs> no. That's what I'm here for. I mean, um, here nowadays, uh, they start them off at six or eight. Now, when I when when I started playing, um, we had what's called flag football uh, in about third grade, um, and then contact football was uh, fifth and sixth grade, and seventh grade, and then you then in eighth grade you went into what was school ball. You played for your for your middle school, and then of course you got into high school. You played for high school, but we um, now there's leagues that start them off at six. But I started in like third grade. But, you know, we all played, you know, 
uh, backyard backyard parking lot football Which where is basically football yep. rugby style <laughs> yeah you know you, <laughs> no, you pads. no pads and you and your friends are out there you know just beating the hell out of each other trying to you know and if you didn't have enough for you know you never had enough for teams or if you had an odd team somebody was the you know all-time quarterback so he was the quarterback for both teams um you know and you played like that me my, i had older brothers and my dad um, my brother, my brother, four years, the one just older than me is three years older than me. And the oldest one is five years. But my dad, um, when he would have them out there working out in our yard, because my dad was ex military. And so if you played a sport, he was always working with you with it. Um, and I would have to get out there with my brothers and their full fancy pads with, and go up against them in my toy pads and you know get the crap knocked out of me all day long but um rob when did you i never played it down outside of backyard football until i was in sixth grade yeah sixth grade yeah so 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 growing growing up as kids and you and you're playing backyard football rob rob is everyone wanting to be the quarterback how do you how do you sort out who plays what positions Hmm. Well, uh, it, it kind of came down to speed mostly, but everybody played every position because it was like three on three or four on four. So everybody was a quarterback, running back or whatever at some point or other in backyard yeah. football. But in, in American gridiron, the speed is in the backfield. The big boys are the blockers. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, you know, and that's, you know, um, back in the day, you know, I'm sure it was a lot like you guys. You know, we you, we got to watch one college game on Saturday, a uh, football game, and then one, you know, two pro games on on Sunday. You didn't get to check, you know, pick who you. But when your team played, you you finally got to what we. You know, I grew up listening to Oklahoma football, and Rob did too on the radio. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. Which sounds like we're from the fifties, but we're not. I mean, it just they didn't have game. You know, they only had one game a weekend. They just on didn't show them. They yeah. didn't show them. Yeah. And, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, that's one of the things that I, that I was wanting to find out is how you know if it was organized at a young age. And now, do the universities play it? Like you know, we have Oklahoma University or Sooners. Do do the universities play it there? Uh, there's university sides, but what? Because you used to have your local your local competitions, which I mentioned before, like if you were from Tassie, you'd have your your local sides, you know, your, your competition, and then it, it, if you were say going to university, they'd have different divisions. So it was more like you had your your, your top league, wherever you come from, and then uh, probably what they call an amateur, a little bit like right. your. Um, yeah, then you're amateur, which which obviously means you, well, you was not meant to get paid. But uh, unfortunately, I mean, I played amateur football too, and um, you, you actually did get paid sometimes. It wasn't very much, but you could get paid if you was good enough. But uh, yeah, so that that's really how it was. If you was any good, um, you know, you'd get picked up in the AFL. That's obviously oh. where they get a bit of money, but. Uh, yeah, so that's that's sort of how it worked. But we used to be the same as you guys, kick to kick in the. We used to have the football out and we'd kick it. You know, you get about fifteen on one end and fifteen on the other, and just jump up in the air and try and mark the ball. And uh, you know, and then uh, yeah, I suppose uh, exactly the same as what. Oh. Yeah. Now, uh, as far as stats, now it's, again, this is something that um, I wanted to find out. You know, in an American football gridiron, we're stat crazy. So I wanted to ask you. I'm looking at the uh, AFL website. I don't know how they would keep stats in the AFL. <laughs> well, they do. I'm looking at them right here. Wow. And by the way, That's... Rob has become a professional. Are they referees? <laughs> over yeah, there because yeah, yeah. uh, every, every rob has figured out the scoring he does the uh the little uh goal hand sign pointing the fingers and, nice. and yeah. yeah he's been sitting here we're watching it's like the greatest <laughs> games it's all these different clips and i'll see rob out of the corner of my eye he'll do the two-hand one and then he'll do the one-hand one he's figured it out when they <laughs> when it's <laughs> so the um the, the stats, Terry, uh, are basically disposals, how many disposals each player has, and that you know that counts for how many kicks they have, how many hand passes they have, uh, 
Um, yeah, heavy tackling. Here, let me just let me run through them here. I'm looking. At, we got kicks. I'm guessing that's how many times they kick it, or is that how many times they score? Yep, when yep. Yeah, uh, how many kicks you get? So kicks are like carries, I guess, in in American and gridiron. If you're running yeah. back and you, yeah. you get okay, that makes sense. Handballs is that when they punch so, it? That's when they they yeah they handball it. As you know, we can't throw the ball, so we we punch it, we handball it to one another. So you could so so your statistics. If I played a full game of football, I could end up with fifteen kicks for the game. I could end up with ten handballs, four tackles. And three goals. Gotcha. Okay. You know, I mean, that's 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 your statistics for the game. So, or just there's a thing called smothering the ball. Uh, there's what's it? Uh, what's a disposal? There's another thing called clangers. Clangers is when you make mistakes. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you if you, if you make a mistake and that you, at the end of the game that's uh, where you made three or four clangers. So, okay. uh, what yeah. what is a disposal then? A disposal is a kick. Oh. Just you can because you, it's what you do. You either kick the ball, or you, as I said, handball the ball, or you could tap it on. So a disposal is when you kick it or handball it, basically. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, then you're moving the ball on a, a mark. That's when you catch it, right? A catch a kick, correct? Yes, so, correct. Catch, yep. Yep. I already figured that catch. one out. See, I have been watching the game. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hit outs. What's a hit out? Is that just when they knock it out of bounds or? Or so when you, when you when you got a ruckman when you start a game remember I said there's two ruckmen they come in and they like in basketball so if you think as Jeff said it's probably the easiest way in basketball you have two guys don't you they go to the middle circle and they they've got to tap it don't they to their opposite or to their side uh -huh. in okay. basketball jump ball. jump ball yeah jump ball yeah. jump ball yeah okay so that's exactly the same way gotcha it starts. Brain rules football, but they can punch it or tap it to their player or their on, on their side, and and uh, so that's how the game starts. It always when you kick a goal, it always goes back to the middle, and they they throw the ball, they bounce the ball, and that starts the game each time. So if you kick a goal, it goes back to the middle. If you kick a point, well then the opposition they kick out. From from a, what they call a ten yard square, it's a it's a mark in the defensive line, and they kick the ball back out. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. What's no. a what's a free freeze freeze four? What was what? it called? It's, it says freeze four and freeze against. Oh, freeze four. Yeah. Well, freeze four is um, obviously if you uh, get a free kick. Yeah. Free kick, gotcha. yeah. If, yeah okay. So you could have ten free kick. Your whole side could have, you know, twenty three free kicks or something like that. And then against, I call, I say clangers, but that's that's another word for <laughs> clangers. <against. laughs> oh, clangers. Wasn't it, wasn't he in mash? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Clinger. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and just so ever, if our if our listeners are out there, it, you know, we talked about the 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 fifty. Uh, I guess that's 50 meter mark out there it means nothing other than that's a reference points for the announcers, right? And that what you yeah, said. It's yeah, it's just to say how far out from goal they are. Okay, so they, they don't. It's not like the three point line in in no. basketball or anything like that. No, it, it, I think the, the the benchmark for for kicking a goal in in Australia is for, uh, rules football is is around about 50 meters is probably the the limit of most footballers' ability. There are some that can kick further, but uh, it gives the players a, a reference of where they are. Okay. Yeah. How, the, how far the, yeah. I mean, if you – the other thing is the the ground. On the football ground, you've got a, a, a boundary, what they call the boundary line. And it, usually if you have the ball and you kick it mm -hmm. over the boundary line on the full and it goes out of bounds, then the opposition take the free kick. But you, if you tap it out of bounds and the ball runs out, then they throw it in and then the ruckman, a little bit like I said before, the two ruckmen, they'll go at the ball and they'll try and hit it to their opposition from the boundary, not the middle. Okay. The only time you go back to the middle of the ground is when you kick a goal. Okay. Cool. And what what's so, a what's a behinds? I know what a behind is in the US, <laughs> but I mean, in terms of American, that kind Australian. Of point. It's a, a point. A point? So okay. if you kick... With the points, yeah. If you kick it through the points, or it hits the goal post, or goes through those two 
side post point. That's a bit, they call that a behind ah. or point. Just so and, you know, okay, just so you know, I don't know, you know, no disrespect, okay? Please understand, okay? <laughs> Handball and behinds or mean two different things apparently <laughs> in in Australia and America. Right. Okay. I'm just going to tell you that. you're going to be that yeah. guy. Okay. What, All right. You what is the, what's the, what's the handball stand for? Yeah, we can't get into that. I mean, you know, it has to do oh, with a hand okay. and and balls, okay? There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We we call that a squirrel grip. A squirrel grip. <laughs> <laughs> squirrel grip. Okay. All right. I see my very good. My uh, my high school football coach. He he used to. He called it driving your hand car. Is what he used to tell us. <laughs> yeah. You know, and he would do, he'd yell at you. You know, what are you doing out there driving your hand car around? You're not playing football. You know, but yeah, coach coaches had hey. some of the the best best lines ever so yeah terry can i can i just quickly ask you a question on on your football sure so, something that i've always wanted to know is is when when you make a play uh, on a down first down or second down whatever it is you, you have a guy that walks up with a big flag and a chain and and puts it down to where that that ball's going to be played again for the next right next play how do they know that's where the ball ends up <laughs> good question we, no. we have refs on the field we have refs on the field and you yeah. know your side judges they you know it, it, it's they mark it where they say the ball's at is where it's at and then they move wow then they move the chains because if it's close if it's a fourth down or they're they're close to getting 10 yards they bring the chains out to you know to check and see but it it's not accurate. I mean, you know, obviously well, it, it's a visual. It's a know. little easier because we almost never go backwards with the football. Yeah, it's always. Yeah, but when forward. they when they say you know we're we're nine and inches or something like that, how do you how do you get that measurement if you just sort of and and if the ball ends up underneath you know four three or four players, they have right. no idea. Where <laughs> so the first down Sorry. marker, they are. It's a ten. It's a ten yard chain. So. Yep. It's stretched out ten yards, so if if you know you come three quarters of that, that they're going to know that's. But you'll you if when you watch the game, you'll see the side judges. They'll one of them, whichever side it's closest to, you know they have the hash marks on either side of the field. They'll run up, and you'll see them. They'll stick their foot out, and that's where they're going to mark the ball out. Okay, and it, yeah, and it's okay. all a visual. Okay, now there has been talk. Caleb is is a big proponent of this of putting a. Uh, you know, in today's day and age, putting a GPS deal in a football and in yep. the field, and you say, here's where 10 yards is, and there's no doubt. You know what I mean? There, yeah. there, there's no doubt on it. But, you know, that's kind of like in baseball. Too. I mean, there's some things about both games, and I'm sure it's true with Australian football. It's just the tradition of the game. You know, I mean, yeah. you don't want to take, you know, I, I you guys have talked about how, um, you know, it's not as – the rules have changed for the safety of the players, but I'm telling you, I watched, you know, that we have NFL Network. We have to where you can watch old guys like, you know, Dick Butkus and uh, uh, Deacon Jones and Lyle Alzado, Mean Joe Green. These guys were just mean. I mean, they, 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 they you know, they would tell you they would bite your hand in the huddle. It, they Dick literally Bu rip your head off. Yeah, Dick good. Buckets was say he looked for a hand, fingers in a huddle because in a pileup because he was going to find an opponent and bite it off. <laughs> I mean, that's just how they played the game. I was watching some of your greatest defenders, okay, um, in the history of it. It was the same way. The, I mean, those guys were back in yeah. the seventy. They were just vicious. It was a whole different game. It, it was a different. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and you, you're hundred percent correct. All they've done, I suppose, it's like in American football. It did, have they tried to over what's the word um, over correct the game? It, it, like in other words, have they have they done it for safety? Is that is that what that's yeah, what it, we're saying? Yeah, it's it's it, all for yeah, it's safety. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, to, to cut back on injuries, to prolong careers, to yeah, you know, um, with with you know CTE and everything now, but I mean. You know, that you just if you watch the old NFL films and you see guys like you know for the Cowboys Ed Too Tall Jones and and 
you know, mean Joe Green with the Steelers. These guys, they, I mean, you know, it was a lot more violent. I can yeah, promise it was, you that. You know, it, you had, you know, my Steelers, we, you know, had Jack Lambert, you know, and in a Super Bowl against the Cowboys, the um, uh, Steelers missed a, a field goal, and one of the Cowboys players mouthed off to the to our kicker and jack lambert a linebacker hurt him runs out there and body slams him you know between plays that's how the game was played you didn't disrespect each other now you know it's um it's it's softer yeah it's it's more finesse now than it is physical and is that fair to say rob so yeah Yeah. not that it's not still physical it's just not as physical you know, you can't hit guys like you used to hit them 20 years like ago, used 30 to. That's years. the same, same here. It's the same yeah. in Australia. They've, they've yeah. corrected the game. So what you saw back in the 70s, when you if you saw some old footage, oh, yeah. you could get away with much everything. Uh, now, as that's what I was sort of trying to explain you, the game's probably a little bit over-umpired. They probably over-umpire the game or the referees, as you'd call them, whatever. They, they, they're probably over correcting all the time and that's a lot of people a lot of older people that use they, they like the older style of football um, a lot of the young ones they don't know any different they're up with the modern oh. uh, all as, as it would be in American football you know that's the, that's the only thing they know but it um, yeah I, I don't know I suppose as you said it's it's about protecting yeah it's just about protecting well I mean yeah, back at one of my favorite running backs played for the Dolphins Larry Zonka Okay. And well, he was known to run down corners and safeties. <laughs> he would literally, he would be out in the open and he would cut back inside to go run over a cornerback. Take you off your cleats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, he could run untouched. But um, one last thing before we let you guys go, um, who, who is the Tom Brady of, of Australian football? Uh, of the past or now? Now? You mean now? Yeah, or of all time, past, of all, now? All time. Of all time. Okay. Okay. Well, look, there's there's a guy I think I might have mentioned, a guy called, uh, and it's not because he, it's a side that I barrack for, but he's, he's well known <laughs> as a bloke called Lee Matthews, his name was. He was a, probably around about 5'11", uh, and he was he was dirty. Or when I say dirty, he was filthy. He was a, he was one of those players that would hit, but he was also a fantastic footballer. So probably he was one of the the best. But he was classed as a, uh, I don't know, as a, a, a rover. That was the guy that plays in the middle and plays forward. Uh, there's a guy that Jeff uh, barracks for, a guy called Wayne Carey, who now. Uh, was probably one of the best centre half forwards. He was a goal kicker. He probably goes down as one of the best players of all time too. So it all depends what position. But mm. now, um, defenders, you can go on and on. yeah, defenders. Yeah. Who, who was who was the meanest man to ever play the game on the defen- oh, oh. defenders? Oh, so there's one going way back called. Uh, you'd you'd enjoy this. There was a bloke called Cowboy. They used to call him the Cowboy, <laughs> uh, Cowboy Neil, and he was. He used to just up in bikes, left, right, and centre. And uh, he played for uh, the St Kilda Saints. Uh, he was probably he was one of the hard men of football in the defensive line. Um, there was a bloke called Jack Dwyer, played at Richmond. He played in defence too, and and on the ball. But he was another one that was, I suppose, we call him a thug over here. Um, but they were pretty tough footballers. So there's there's a couple. yeah. So, okay, well, and one, I'm looking at your guys' website, which is uh, the www.thefridayfrothy.com, uh, and they have, you know, little bios, and I want to see if you guys know what this means, okay? You, okay. Both, you both have outkicked your coverage. You understand that, don't you? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that what means? It? You've outkicked, out, 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 outkicked your coverage. Do you know no. what? Okay, your wives, okay, um, are much better looking than both of you guys. <laughs> and in the United States, that's a sports term for you're dating somebody who's you know a way prettier or out of your league. It's you've outkicked yep. your coverage. You know your guys can't. Right. Have, so. Similar. 
but no more, no more, no more. He nod, nod her head, and she's saying, "Yes, I'm out of your league." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but you know but that that's. The truth. The what? truth behind the matter there is, guys, is they just don't know how good they've got it. <laughs> 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 uh, having having two great husbands like us, yeah. really, seriously. Uh, right. I mean, me and you know Rob, we were talking about that with Teresa, and Rob has a lady friend with him tonight, and we, you know, we didn't understand why our plate wasn't made, and you know, um, <laughs> and brought to us. You know, I don't, I, you know, not the, not. We just didn't understand why it wasn't. That's because they outkicked their coverage, yeah, Terry. They, <laughs> they outkicked their coverage. So that's a, that's a term that you can you guys can use. A, you know, a sports term d- dealing with you know people who are um, you know married or dating a lot better looking people. It's um, you know that guy outkicked his coverage. If you know if he's if she's so much better looking, you know he he just somehow nobody's sure how he landed that. So. <laughs> but Rob, do you got anything else for the guys? No, for, it's been for great, Jeff? guys. We really appreciate you coming on. No, happy to, happy to be here, guys. If you ever want to get back in contact and talk cricket, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we'll send you some pictures of us fishing with crickets. That's about all that we can. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a cricket conversation, I believe. Yeah, we, we could have a cricket conversation. So, but uh, yeah, and, you know, and I think you know, um, do this. You know, once sports start, you know, kick back in, we can we can do it again. For, you know, so we actually can, you know. Um, you guys can fill us in on what's going on in Australia with the league and your teams, and we can fill you guys in on what's going on with the Sooners and our oh, NFL sure. teams. So, be fantastic. We we had a little article, fellas, before you go on that Tom Brady, and I did a segment there with Jeff uh, the other night, and uh, the uh, the coach of the Tampa Bay, Florida, um, he he was saying that obviously. Obviously, Arians, is that his name? Arians, his last name? Uh, the Tampa, I don't know who the Tampa Bay coach is. Is it? Well, at any rate, well, I think it, that's that's his last name. But anyway, he was saying that he was saying that uh, they were worried would Tom Brady pick up their defensive plays. And he just joked and he said he'll pick it up in two days. <laughs> that's what he said. So yeah. obviously, with he might. experience. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I mean, yeah, he might. I mean, it's. I, you know, personally, I'm not a Patriots fan. Okay, and honestly, I don't know many people who are. <laughs> people, people in our part of the country are Patriots fans. Were Patriots fans back when the Patriots were terrible? And yeah, um, you know, like I said, here in the, here in the Midwest in the United States, uh, most people don't like the Patriots. Most people don't like Tom Brady, um, Belichick. But you know, it, it's one of those things. I you know, if you're a true sports fan, you understand why. You know, you don't like them. It's because they're better than you. You know, because I mean, he's good. Yeah, that's, that's you know, I'm in Australia. <laughs> if if he that was could. if he was your quarterback, you would love him. But because he plays for the for the Patriots, you hate him, and I hate him. So, <laughs> is is the yeah, I know we've got to go, but is the Patriots' success due to just uh, having more money and being a stronger team? Yeah, no, um, yes. it it has to it has to do with Belichick and understanding when to let guys go i mean there's been a lot of people cut from the patriots it's kind of like the steelers the steelers will cut people at a certain time doesn't matter where they're at okay it's just Mm -hmm. we're only going to play you x amount of years that's it we're going to cut you we're going to send you somebody else the patriots have become really good at that Uh, belichick has become really good at that but um you know it's it's not he's just again as as much as i don't like him he's a great coach i mean it's just there's no yeah. you can't argue that probably the best ever yeah honestly. i mean he, he he was the only coach that he had wasn't he belichick he was the only coach yeah. that he ever had tom yeah well, he's dead. now he's got this other guy this arians or yeah whatever or, he's not. and 50 million money. and 50 million in his back pocket yeah not bad but i mean you know that, i i don't i he didn't need the money yeah he didn't need the money <laughs> I mean, you know you know, his wife makes – that's that's part of the re- – you know, he's not a very high-paid quarterback. His wife makes like three times as much money as Tom does. So, wow, what does she make? 
She's a model, and she is friggin' hot. She's a supermodel. <laughs> it's not good. But hell, it? <laughs> yeah. She's pretty what good at this? it. Yeah, she's really good at it. So, <laughs> no, right. but I mean that you know they didn't have to deal with a giant contract, you know, a, a giant quarterback contract. Cause, a million is pretty big. Yeah, but I mean, in the scheme of things, you know, I mean, he, it, it they were able to pay other people more because Tom didn't need the money. You know, or didn't want so the money. So, are you are you trying to tell us here that that fifty million for two years is not a big contract? No. Oh. Well, I mean, not when you got guys. <laughs> what's What's Roethlisberger making? Oh, he's at least that. At least that. Yeah, I mean, they they it's ridiculous. The amount of money these guys over here make to play football is is That's ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, mm. you know, um, it, it's. But I mean, he's making that. I I don't think he. I mean, he's what forty two now, forty forty two. I I mean, I, I don't I don't I I could be wrong. I don't think he's going to help the Buccaneers at all. I mean, I just there's a time. I mean, I, I'm fifty two. I can remember when I was forty two. I wasn't yeah. much better than I am now. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't. I, 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 I can't imagine <laughs> him being that good at four. But he could be. I mean, but y- you look at tradition. Brett Favre tried to play, and he was adequate, but he yeah. wasn't the Brett Favre of old. So, yeah, you know, there's a time there's one, to hang it up. Yeah, there's one last question that I, I've always wanted to know about American football, and and in what's happening here, obviously with this coronavirus. Okay, we we have a in our leagues here, we have as you as you said, Australian rules football or Australian football league. They they're the ones that have all the money, and they you know any the money gets filtered out to different clubs, okay that's how they do it here, and also the clubs can they have salary caps, like they've got X amount of players and they've got X amounts of salary, and that's and they can't go over that salary cap in American football. You guys, are you, are you privatized? Did you have people that own the football teams over there? Club? Yeah, it, you know what I mean. They're they're Club? private. They're privately owned. All of them are. I think. All of them yeah. are, are privately owned. It, well, yeah. you know, they're, the Packers, you know, the the community owns them because they sold stock, you know, in the team. But yep. it, you know, there's a, there's a primary owner of it, and we do have salary caps. Yep. Um, and if they go over that salary cap. Yeah, they get you know they pay it in on the backside in taxes yeah, and all right. that stuff. But yeah, you know they if the good GMs are the people that can put together like what you know and good coaches like what the Patriots have done. You you fit those you fit those players, and mm. you know when that player comes to you and says, "Hey, my contract's up. I want you know sixty million instead of forty million," and they go your position to us isn't worth that. So no. go on. And that's, I think that's what a lot of, you know, that's what the Patriots have been, been really good at. I mean, um, you know, Edelman's not, uh, the kid that was from, um, here in Oklahoma city that played for Texas tech. Yeah. That's not, Edelman. That's, no, um, I'm trying uh, Wes Welker. Welker, Wes Welker changed changed the game with, with the, the, the split, the slot, rece- the slot receiver. Yeah. Okay. Small guy, fast guy, changed it. They, he played there f- through his first contract, I think. Maybe got one extension, and he wanted more money, and they said, no, your position's not worth that. And so he left. I mean, you know, that's how the Patriots do it. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. The only, so. yeah. the only reason I asked you about that was because because of this coronavirus. In, now, if I just quickly to rugby league, and you've seen rugby league, yeah. And whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. That, so that's played in, as Jeff said, more in New South Wales or Sydney, or, and and in Brisbane or up in the northern part of the country. But they, right at the moment, the, the rugby league they are suffering because of the, the the amount of money that they're lost because of this coronavirus, and there's also a football team obviously called GWS, which is an Australian rules football team that plays in Sydney. And because of this, because the clubs are losing so much money because they're not playing, 
what they're talking about. There's two American guys, and I can't think of their name. I'll have to find out and, and just flick it through to you. But there's two, I think they're billionaires over there in America, and they're trying to, they're talking about almost even buying a football team over here, which is DWS, the Greater right. West Sydney. So right. that's coming from America. Hmm. I haven't heard. That, that, may be, that may be something that we do down here. It's never worked in the past. But we may have guys that actually, you know, big businesses that actually buy football teams and that down here to make them survive yeah. and turn them into franchises. Well, yeah, franchises. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there, but here in America, there's you know, like the the Steelers have been owned by the Roonies for years, um, and um, oh, the the Chiefs who just won the Super Bowl is the same way. Shot. Yeah, One the shot. shot you know they it, it, they're family owned most of them they bought them they started you know as far back as the 50s or 40s or 30s and they've just yeah. kept it going and cool. but well guys again um thank you for yeah. uh joining yeah. us um uh, is it is it deep into day drinking time over there now <laughs> <Wouldn't be there>. <laughs> <laughs> but um again thanks for the education and we will do it again uh everybody out there thanks for listening to us make sure to hit the subscribe button and share it and tag us and whatever you're doing but that's a podcast for today boomer rob boomer terry boomer guys Sooner fans, you really need to go check out our podcast partners. First off, teambarfinder.com. Download their app on the Apple Store or on Google Play. Find out where you can watch your Sooners locally at your local pub. Also, go check out tailgateconnect.com for the best tailgates across the country. And go learn football from Jason Young, JY, and the Trench Warfare Report, www.trenchwarfarereport.com. Let's get this going. Yeah.